Praise the Lord, friends. Thomas Manton IV here. The Lord spoke to me today something really amazing. And uh, I, I've been feeling this the whole day. And God's given me several confirming words to uh, reiterate the point and to verify this truth. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord brings liberation, liberty, a libertized life. I know that's not a word, but I can try to make it a word. Acts 1.8 says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and the Holy Spirit is the one who gives liberation. Acts 1.8 said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in all the, all the world and to the uttermost parts of the earth, if you can receive his power, there'd be nothing impossible for you to accomplish. And the Lord's been reminding me that so many people are stuck. I want to entitle this, if I can, and I may change the title, but I want to entitle this, Living an Unstuck Life. Living a victorious life. Li living a liberated life. I'll, I'll, I'll get the title later after, after we get on with the program here, but uh, the, the point has to be made that you need to work on breaking anything that's controlling your fruition, your productivity, your peace, your joy, your, you know, your, your God charge to run a race. You have to fight for your calling. You have to Work on what he wants you to be working on. And that's it. And you got to do whatever it takes. Now, I was reminded also of another scripture. In Isaiah 119, says, If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse to rebel, you'll have trouble. Let me say it in a nice way. I'm not changing what the word says, but you can read it yourself. Uh talks about a sword and devour, devouration and all that. You know, that's, not, that's no joke, okay? I think the prophets, you know, had some very strong terminology, you know. But you say it in a nice way, things won't be well, but if you want to have a well existence, you have to be willing and obedient to do what God wants. And sometimes you just need to reach on in the inside of yourself and make an adjustment to get happy about what he's telling you to do. A lot of people think that they got that covered, but they don't. Because they're, they're not willing enough to do really zealously what God wants. Some of them might say, well, I'm on fire. On fire for what? What do you want fire for? Is it really the plan of God? Is it really exactly what he wants? It might not be. Well, I love Jesus. I love God. I, we know that. That's not enough. You have, to, you have to get on with the purpose that he has ordained for you, or how are you going to proceed to advance the kingdom? So I, I, heard, I heard this so clearly. I mean, it was just so clear. I was like, Lord, this is great. And, you know, about blessings coming, you know, have, have you done everything there is to do to get blessed? I would say not. I would say you haven't at all. Have you done everything that it would take to get blessed? A big part of it is working in the, in, the, in the vineyard, you know, that's kind of a corny term, vineyard. Do we have vineyards? Do we have vines and grapes? You know, they had all that in Israel. I know they have a lot in Italy too, but I, I, I got to get a better, I got to get a 21st century kind of New York terminology word, city, city buster word for this vineyard thing. 
let's say your or your field or your your environment. You you know, field is even funny because that's kind of out in the countryside. In the city, you have concrete buildings and roads and doors and windows everywhere, and cars and traffic and all that. So I'll get a word for that. Your your sphere of operation. Are you, are you tilling the ground that God's given you to till? Are you working in it? Now, I know this is painful because a lot of people are going to have the experience where God's going to begin to wake you up and show you and say to you, Hey, you haven't been working your land, and that's why things are not in fruition the way you want yet. There's, I have to say this prophetically, there's no, there's absolutely no limit to what you can have and achieve and become and do and have if you work diligently unto the Lord in what he's given you to do. Part of it is giving. You know, there's a scripture that says the generous one will become like a well-watered garden. That's in Proverbs. I can't remember the address of it. Is it 1125 or somewhere? I don't need any answers right now, but I'm just going to look for it myself. I'll find it and put it. I'll put it. I'll put it somewhere on the screen in the comments or something like that. The liberal soul shall be made fat. That's the King James. That's a really. That's a really bad terminology. Liberal and fat. We don't want either of those. I don't. I don't know about you, but they mean they mean too many other things these days. But generous, we understand that. Soul, we understand that. Garden, we understand that. Well watered, fruitful, producing a lot of crops, you know, a lot of produce. The Bible says, Solomon said, if you're generous, my God, I feel the anointing here. If you're generous, things will begin to come back. You have to give all the time, live to give. And let's say you give too much, you know, don't regret it, just do it. Keep moving on. Whatever you gave away, don't lament about it. Just say, okay, count it as a seed. Lord, I was generous, even though maybe I didn't put it in the right soil. You know, there's soil that needs to be sown into. And there's, there's soil that, doesn't, that, that isn't really the right soil. But you can't lament over that. You have to just, uh, you have to just move on anyway and keep doing. God is very serious about the laws he gave us. Now, let me give you another example that's really powerful. Abraham, in Genesis 12, verse 1, the Bible says... <laughs> He said he had to go out from where he was brought up and go find another place that God would ordain for him to get to, and he would flourish there. Another principle is Elijah had to leave a place where he was and go find a place called there, a new place, because the provision was somewhere where he wasn't at the moment. You know, you, you, you have to be careful about that. Something may seem good, but it may not be God. Some things may seem like they're acceptable and good, but they're not, you know, but, but, but not, not God. They're not God. You know what? God is not to blame. He's not slack concerning his promises. He hasn't forgotten what he's ordained. He'll never repent or relent on what he wants to do for you if you'll do enough for him. And this is the, this is the day and the hour where people need to really get a, a, a check, a check, a check in every area. Another analysis, another uh, examination, that's the word I'm looking for, to figure out what it is God wants exactly what he wants. When you can work on something and shut out all the noise of everything else and focus on a thing, I know some people that do that and they're very successful. 
I mean, they really get the breakthrough because they focus. They really go after what it is that they're wanting to achieve, and then they actually get it. But you have to focus, and then you have to be diligent, and then you have to live unstuck. Here's another thing. All the people that want you to please them and do things for them, like their way and all that, what they want, that doesn't mean that you're obligated to do it at all. In fact, when you discern and feel that something is not quite what God uh, ha has ordained for you, you need to just like fight against the tide that would keep you stuck. Living an unstuck life. Have you thought that you've done so many things to get what you want and you didn't get it? Because there's, there's something else you need to be doing. Be careful not to disqualify yourself from eating the good of the land because you're not happy about what God's program is. I tell you, people are in church, people are doing things, or they're caught up in certain environments, relationships, environments, and they're just stuck anyway. So everything that's moving and glittering and moving doesn't mean it's God for you. Something could be good, but it may not be God. I keep saying that. I want to emphasize that. Something could be good, but it's not God for you. You need to be exactly in the thing that God's ordained for you. So we want to pray this prayer. I like Genesis 12 when it says Abraham, Abram, Abram. This is before he became Abraham. He didn't become Abraham until Genesis 15 when the Lord put him to sleep and walked in the midst of the animals that he had made a sacrifice of. Pretty interesting scenario, yeah? And that's when God put part of his name inside of Abraham's name and the Ha, the H of Yahweh, Jehovah was put in the middle of Abraham and at the end of Sarai's name Sarai became, his wife became Sarah and her nature changed so before that even happened he had to get up and move my God I feel the anointing before that even happened he had to get up and, and adjust himself to move according to the plan. And he had that testimony, you know, we see this. He was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. He knew he had to sojourn. The Bible uses that word, uses that, uses that word sojourn in the land. He had to find, he had to keep moving. A lot of people, they get stuck in their environment. They just, whatever they, they, wherever they are, that's all they know. And that's all they do. And they'll never become anything else. Not that the person's evil, not that everything is evil, a lot of things are, but not everything. But it's just like you, you're just staying in one realm and you're not advancing because you're not moving, you're not shifting gears. If something's not working, you have to move it. You, you have to move you, you know, you have to move it, like move it, like vamos, move, move, move. I could say it in a lot of languages. You have to move, you have to shift, you have to, f you have to focus, you have to just get on with what the Lord has ordained. So we're asking the Lord to reveal to us where we stand in, in regards to our willingness and obedience so that we can correct ourselves. He can correct us and show us, convict us and show us things that we need to adjust so that we'll prosper greatly in Jesus name I want to tell you something if 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 something is continually wrong uh, there's something that needs to be adjusted into another dimension and whoever wants whatever from you that God that, that God's not in the equation you have to get unstuck from that And we're not alive to waste any time. I wrote this down. We're not alive to waste any time. We're not alive 
to do anything but to produce kingdom advancement. The Holy Spirit is the one who will help us do that. He liberates us from every situation. And, he gives us, and we need to break ties to unfruitful places, relationships, and environments. We need to break ties. The Lord, listen, this is what the Lord spoke to me. This is very powerful. God spoke this to me. This this doesn't come from a book I read or some quote from somewhere or something I thought of in my head. Jehovah spoke this to me earlier today. He said, break ties to unfruitful places, relationships, and environments. Now, again, things could be good, but they may not be the perfect plan that God has. Things may seem okay, and things may be for a season, and I'm at the point, like, I love, I love people. To, I, I want to see people blessed. Like, whatever is good for you, whatever God, when God's going to breathe upon you in your situations, and things are going to begin to happen greatly for you, oh my, I get thrilled. OMG in caps, oh my God, I get absolutely thrilled to see God moving in someone's life, and they're advancing, and they're prospering and they're succeeding it's paramount now I have to talk about something else winning souls you know like winning souls is probably is absolutely unequivocally the best thing we can do because that's the only thing that will outlast this season like where you go where someone goes in eternity is the most meaningful thing of all and the Bible says also, that might be 1125. I keep mixing up 1125 with another. Or I'll find it. In Proverbs, it says, He that wins souls is wise. But the one about liberal souls should be made fat in the King James. Someone find that for me and write it to me. The Lord, the Lord is, uh, if someone's watching on Facebook, you can put it on the screen. Some of my friends in America, you can do that. My American friends. If you find that verse... I don't want it from anywhere else. I want it from America. If you're in America, this is your moment. Bible students, Americans, I want it from America. I'm, I'm saying that for a reason. All else need not apply. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in a funny way. But I'm serious. So if you find that scripture that says, a, a, another in, modern English translation says, a degenerous person will become like a well-watered garden themselves. Well-watered, it's a hard word to say. Well-watered. Fruitful and productive and blessed garden. You will become, if you're a generous soul, if you're a generous person. Now, you don't want to be too generous that you're foolish, because I know what that's like, and uh, some people really know what that's like. We call it the giver's remorse. Buyer's remorse, you know, that if someone bought something they shouldn't have or they, they don't like what they bought afterwards. They have remorse about buying something. You, have, you can have giver's remorse of being open and generous to people and people take advantage of you or whatever. But we have, to, we have to always be moving on, saying, Lord, you know, you know what happened in that moment? I didn't know maybe, but you knew. Or you say you didn't know, but God did know. And he'll... He'll help. And if anything was stolen, the thief also has to pay back seven times, the Bible says. But you need to keep being generous, but not to, not to the wrong people. You know, you can learn from some hard situations and get to the point where you say, now, I'm never going to give a cut and pick and dime, pound or pence to another fool in my life. Amen. In my lifetime, I will not. Some people don't deserve nothing. I mean, absolute zero. And you can make that decision. Say, you know what? You're, 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 you're off. You're totally unproductive. You're, 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 you're a, a liar, a thief, or whatever. You know, a connish person. You, they should get absolutely nothing but knocked in the head. Too bad we can't be the one to do it. You know, we have to let God work some things out. <laughs> That's why some of us don't carry weapons because we might get carried away and then have to answer for using them. So <laughs> it's better we don't we don't have them. We trust God. Our bodyguards are angels. Praise the Lord. And uh, we we move everywhere. We move with the help in the planet, the, the help of God. So 
just because you had a bad experience shouldn't change your positive outlook on life and the things God wants to give you. You belong, I wrote this down. Yes, Lord. Whoever wants what from you can't be allowed to control you at all. Somebody wants something. You know what you say to that? So what? I don't care. Flip. Who gives a flip? I care about what God wants. I'm God's person. I belong to Him. I don't care about it. And, and the next point was, I don't care about uh, anybody else's foolishness. All right? And you may want something and think that it's good, but the other person may not feel the same way. So that's just how it is. We belong to God and to His plans, not to the plans of man. We belong to Jehovah God for His own purposes, not to man. I'm really happy to be doing this as a teaching. I don't have to shout, scream, breathe deeply and do backflips and all that. Right now it's just a teaching moment. This is unique because a lot of people come on and they have nothing good to say or they're just making a lot of noise. You know, we see a lot of that, right? It's good to have some noise though. Praise God. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to having some great, you know, worship team flow and uh, Great facilities and all of that, you know, it's all, it's all beautiful because that's, that's an expression of God's greatness and giftedness and everybody can receive from different parts of the thing. But the basis of everything is the Word. I'm glad to be there. I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad myself. I am very glad to be there. The basis of everything is the thinking process of God in you. And, and it's a wake-up call time. It's time to meditate. It's time to examine yourself. It's time to look through your life and say, okay, I want this, but what am I doing to get it? Am I working diligently in my ground? Am I tilling my own land? If, is there something I'm not happy about? Is there something that I'm supposed to be doing that I'm not doing? Is there something I've been like, disobedient in or unwilling in. I need to adjust that. Because Isaiah 119 says, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse to rebel against that good thing that God wants to do, then it's another story. I'm talking about God's own mission and God's own plan. I'm not talking about uh, some frivolous thing that somebody wants or thinks they want or whatever for occurrence, event, relationship, you know, circumstance, atmosphere. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ultimate plan of Jehovah God for the mission for your life. You need to get serious about it. You need to know what it is. You need to discover more about it, learn more about it, discern more about it, study and prepare yourself in that thing and know more about it and really begin to flow in the plan of action that God has. And that's the most important thing you can do. That and winning souls. Getting more full of God so that the world can come to Jesus because you were there. But stop living stuck. Stop living controlled. Stop living in fear. Stop living tied to someone else's agenda. Another thing I want, yeah, no, thank you, Lord. That's great. The, the Lord spoke to this to me earlier. I didn't want to forget. But the Lord just reminded me. I love how this is flowing. Agendas. Agenda, agenda, agenda. Everybody has an agenda for something. Some are good, some are not good. You have to just know what's the agenda. But in the midst of everyone's agenda, people can still get blessed. Also, blessings are proof that God is like uh, happy, happy to do something. You know what I mean? Like something comes and God's, God begins to bless. It really begins to make you feel good because He's like you're like Lord, you're here, you're in this. 
So let's be hungry for miracles and blessings. Yes, 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 we need them because it, it shows God's hand in action. But the agenda of you needs to be agenda, the agenda of the Lord. God's agenda. I wrote a, I'm writing a book on this and did a message on this some, quite some time back and I never got it in print, but we're going to get it in print. Also, God's agenda must be your agenda. What he's ordained must be what, you, what's, what you've ordained. His vision must become your vision. His plan must be your plan and not anyone, not anyone else's. You're responsible to him, and he's responsible for you. But the funny thing is about God is he can let people do what they want to do. So people have to decide what it is they want. And that, can, that should only be what God wants. Father, in Jesus' name, I declare right now that you bring in a wake-up call to the church, to every individual person. And they're going to begin to see and understand exactly what it is you want. Their agenda will be your agenda. The mission that you put them on will be the thing, the very thing that you've ordained and nothing else. The purpose and the plan of living the victorious life where blessings are flowing will be their portion. In Jesus' name. The purpose and the plan of action that God has will be what you're walking in and nothing else in Jesus name so let the Lord bring an examination to you uh, a checkup from the neck up and from the neck down your heart your soul your mind your will your emotions your your passion your desires your uh, your like favorite things things you like whatever that's all okay because God gives us all the senses, but he wants us to focus on exactly what it is he wants. Man, I feel this. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven that everything else is getting canceled out except what it is you've ordained in Jesus' name. And, and people are going to get activated, set on fire, get diligent, generous focused energized to do exactly what it is you want them to be doing in Jesus name Amen I pray that you'll take part and take part in this message and I thank you for being my partner in ministry all the information will be on the screen on how you can sow and connect in Jesus' name, the Lord bless you. I love you. Talk to you on the next broadcast. I'm Thomas Manton IV, and I'm praying for you. In Jesus' name, amen.